Thank you so much, TJ. Board of Commissioners, this recess has ended and we are resuming our meeting. Uh, our legislative meeting uh, today is uh, December 17th, 2020, and we are certainly resuming and uh, reflecting on our meeting from December 15th, 2020. Uh, Board of Commissioners, I hope that you had an opportunity to take time and to research and evaluate uh, our topic of discussion where we ended, uh, ended on um, Tuesday and as we will continue today regarding our uh, budget and we will uh, certainly move towards again, uh, make steps to try to move and adopt the 2021 budget. But before we uh, start our session uh, today, I wanna make it clear to all our Board of Commissioners, you have five minutes to deliberate and you have two minutes for rebuttal. I ask that again, we refrain from personal attacks and uh, keep this as civil as possible. Um, Board of Commissioners, uh, if you have any uh, questions, I ask that you reserve your questions until our uh, Director of Finance, General Jennifer Holman, presents again, because you know, again, we had a couple of changes when we left our, our meeting on Tuesday, should I say, in terms of the recess, and I would like her to just update the board on those changes, and of course, then I'll call the question. Uh, Jennifer Hallman, you have the floor, our Director of Finance. Yes, ma'am. Okay, let me share my screen. Everybody can see that? Yes. Perfect. Okay, um, as you know, we um, recessed and uh, met with myself, uh, David uh, Corbin, our financial advisor, and just had some conversations regarding the general fund 2021 budget. And um, this was also sent out to all the commissioners as a possible proposal. Um, and let me just tell you or, or explain to y'all what has uh, changed. Um, we look at the revenue, we added um, or changed the collection rate from 93% to 94%, which added an additional $597,000 in revenue. I feel very confident in that yesterday in this number, and I feel even more confident in that number today because we received a check from the tax commissioner, and now we are at 94.04%. So um, I think that's, um, a solid number. So we were able to adjust our revenues accordingly for even for 2021. Um, our expenditures, um, as far as the proposed budget, had previously before uh, this change had that a retirement contribution of around seven point six million dollars from the general fund and 2.4 million dollars from all the other funds that have employees like um, fire uh, e911 landfill of 2.4 million for a total of 10 million dollar contribution uh, to our defined benefit plan uh, a few weeks ago uh, the pension committee had a meeting with geb core and um, they went over uh, our numbers, went over the actuarial assumptions um, and everything, and they present some estimates to us for 2021, um, what they call the required contribution and the recommended contribution. And those on the high end, those contributions um, ranged anywhere from 8.1 million in total to 8.8 .8 million. Uh, the general fund, um, we went ahead and are suggesting that we reduce the mm -hmm. amount from uh, 10 million to 9.4 million. Um, but knowing that this still leaves us a cushion uh, for the defined benefit contribution, just in case um, the actuarial assumptions or the estimates that GebCorp provided uh, were not 100% um, accurate. So that was a reduction in expenditures uh, of 600,000, but again, not at risk. We do not feel feel confident, not at risk of not having enough funding in our um, to make our retirement contribution. 
So when we make that adjustment, you can see that right now um, it, it, it would show that our revenues are over our expenditures by $1,381,120. So uh, that would put our ending fund balance at 13.3 million, which is around 13.6% of expenditures. But then, you know, uh, from the retreat, from, to the hearing, to various time from when this budget discussion began till uh, day before yesterday, you know, we were taking things out, mm -hmm. adding things in um, and everything. So what I did here was consolidate everything um, as far as what would be or is being proposed in the 2021 budget. Uh, and you'll see here you have the half year for the senior center operations a half uh, for 200,000, a half a year for the rec center operations at 300,000, the day porter for the tax office at 23,000, probate budget adjustment for the uh, salary benefits uh, and operations of the new office for the new probate elect judge at 346,000, 75,000 for the tax allocation district or TAD feasibility study, 150,000 for the Hope Court housing, uh, transfer the current uh, hotel uh, motel hotel staff. staff, 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 staff. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm getting some feedback transfer uh, current hotel motel staff from the hotel motel tax fund to the general fund of 46,000. The library study that which is the preliminary design of 75,000 and to update or change our financial chief financial advisors uh, contract um, from 78,000 to 125,000, which is a difference of 47,000. So you can see all of those changes total $1,262,395. Um, and our unassigned fund balance is just over 12 million with the percentage being 12.2%. And Madam Chair, that uh, summarizes um, the email that went out and I'll return it to you and answer any questions or any concerns. Okay, thank you so much, um, Director Hallman. Board of Commissioners, do you have any questions uh, for Director Hallman before we get into our budget? Did I see your hand? Oh, Commissioner, uh, Commissioner Guider? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Jennifer, um, the transfer of the hotel motel staff from hotel motel tax fund to general fund, what is that about? Uh, we had talked about uh, funding the museum and uh, the cultural arts center, but that doesn't have anything to do with that. No, ma'am. What this is, this was spoke about earlier. If if um, this is making the assumption that all the hotel motel taxes, uh, or making the if the proposed um, suggestion about all the hotel motel taxes being um, distributed to our DMO, uh, which is the DCTT, uh, Designated Marketing Organization. Um, all the funds would go to them. Uh, there were two staff members that the county had as county employees. One has resigned this year, but there's, uh, there still is one employee. And because that fund will not be funding that particular salary and benefits, um, then we need to move that employee and have the funding come from the general fund. Okay, and um, what was decided about the uh, tax commissioner's $300,000? Oh, yes, thank you. I, I appreciate <laughs> you bringing that up. <laughs> Um, yes, that was another item that you see that was discussed about putting on the list uh, last uh, two, two days ago. However, in discussions uh, that Madam Chair and I believe Commissioner Carthen had with the tax commissioner, um, <laughs> it was agreed that the resolution that was um, approved two days ago, the COVID, and remember we had the bucket called technology upgrades that for the initial funding of 300,000 would come from that bucket from that resolution instead of coming out of the proposed 21 budget. Uh, okay. Um, and the rest of it's gonna be revisited, I guess. 
Yes, ma'am. All right. Uh, thank you. I yield back. Thank you so much, Commissioner uh, Guider. Any other comments from the board? Okay. Uh, wait a minute, <laughs> ma'am. Yes, Commissioner Guider. Uh, there was one thing I missed. I'm sorry. I apologize. Uh, I can't scroll up. Would you scroll up, please, on yes. your spreadsheet, Jennifer? Uh, up further. I'm sorry. That's as far as it goes. Well, there was something about the probate judge. Are we going to discuss it separately, or is that no, going to be a down here? That was down here in the list. Oh, okay. Uh, you just got a figure, 346044 there. Uh, where did that come from? That is um, the adjustment. Let me pull it up here. That is this right here, uh, which was discussed two days ago, um, and it's got the different categories with the probate judge base of 88110, probate judge supplement 36688, vital records. Of course, that could fluctuate um, depending on, you know, we've seen it go from 5,000 to, you know, uh, 70,000. 70, uh, staff salary, This that would include an adjustment for two full-time positions, a law clerk and a permit clerk. Uh, and the course of benefits that is associated with that. And then Ms. Peterson had laid out her plan for her operating budget uh, that consisted of 138,000 um, for But this is just a hypothetical figure until we have our discussion. You, you could, you're gonna adjust that figure if we change some of this. This was not voted on, so this was- Right, that, that is- By one of the commissioners. Right. This right here, that amount, though, has been placed as being proposed in the 2021 budget. But we're, we are going to discuss the probate judge today because it affects this budget. And we are. Is that correct? Okay. Yes. Yes, okay. that's correct. So that mm -hmm. figure can change is what I'm saying. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yeah. yeah, you're right. Oh, it hadn't been voted on yet. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Are you thank back? You. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions from from the board before I call the question? Okay. Sounds good. Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to approve the resolution uh, to adopt the 2021 budget? So moved, as presented. Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. I just asked, are, are we not going to uh, talk about the probate judge before we adopt the budget? And you said yes, because it affects this budget. We're putting yeah. the uh, cart before the horse here. Would you Would like you to make a motion to? Motion. We're in motion now. We're in motion, motion so we, can, we, can, we, hear, we hear you, Commissioner. Okay, we have a motion. It sounds like you're trying to pull something, but anyway. I'll vote against the budget then. Okay, Commissioner. Do we have a motion and do we have a second? We have second. a second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion on this budget? Yes, ma'am. We uh, please. May I have the floor? Yes, ma'am. You may have the floor. Why are we putting doing this before we actually lock into? Uh, the probate judge, because this was only talked about or rambled about or mabbled about uh, for about 30 minutes yesterday by one commissioner. We haven't discussed this. And this is a, uh, a part that we need to discuss uh, because the 20,000 on the um, vital records, that's way off. Uh, that's an estimate. So, I don't know why we're doing it this way before we uh, settle the probate judge. Okay. And I, um, I just think uh, we're just out of order here. Thank you, Commissioner. 
Um, any other discussion from the board? Yeah, as a point of order, Madam Chair, may yes. I? And it's, it's more of a comment. Um, just for the citizens, um, any commissioner can propose anything um, into a budget. One commissioner can't remove another's unless they've got two others to join them. Any two commissioners can put something on the agenda. It takes three to pass. There's no procedural file of what just happened, right? We don't have to engage if we don't want to, right? Somebody has their time limit, they can speak. If somebody else wants to weigh in, they can. She set the rules, right? And so we, we've had time to talk about this. Um, it's time for us to set the budget and, and, and get on with the rest of the agenda and close out 2020 and move into 2021. So that's all I had to say, Madam Chair, just for the record that there is no, nobody's doing anything wrong. I yield. And Madam Chair, may I present yeah. my proposal for the probate judge? Yeah, what's your proposal, Commissioner? I propose we pay her the base fee and half of the uh, fees that her office collects. That uh, according to the estimate for this year, that would be around um, half of it would be around $35,000. <clears> um, we have to do a resolution to pay fees to her over $7,500. That's in the law. Uh, the law says we have to pay her the base fee and we, she's entitled to 7,500 up uh, cap on the fees unless the Board of Commissioners agree to pay her more. We have not agreed to pay her more. <clears throat> this is just a figure in the budget. So I don't understand why we're sliding this through. I know you don't want to hear from me, but I assure you the citizens want to hear from me. You are talking about possibly paying uh, the new probate judge $70,000 over her base fee. That would put her up with superior court judges and even, uh, I think it's more than a, an, uh, a Supreme Court judge of the state of Georgia, the entry fee for them. What are you thinking of? And you're given a $36,000 um, supplement. Um, the the twenty thousand dollar figure is way too little, and uh, because it's going to amount to seventy thousand or more. <clears throat> so uh, uh, the current judge uh, just collects on half of the yes. He does hey, Can we get, and, 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 hold on, hold on. Can we get somebody to kind of mute their mic? Please have, okay, please have, okay, Madam Chair, okay, Madam Chair, okay. The outgoing judge collects on half of the death certificates. Yes, somebody is, is interfering with this. Yes, yes please, yes. everyone mute your mics, please. 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 But when we left the meeting the other day, we were talking about coming back and discussing the, the uh, judges, the, the pro probate judge. And now you're just acting like it's a done deal. Evidently y'all gotten together and made your own minds up. You're going, you're, you're opening a Pandora's box with this because if you're gonna give her $70,000 in the fees on top of her base P, uh, fee uh, payment, then you're gonna have the tax commission commissioner coming back, you're going to have the clerk of the court coming back. You are open a Pandora's box that we can't afford. And and I resent the fact that you that we are not discussing this again today for the public. Commissioner Guider, you certainly can make a motion to uh, to pull this item off and I'm surprised with uh, three terms you didn't think of that. So can you if you want to make a motion to to pull it off for discussion, we can do that like we did, we've done previous years. Um, Madam Chair, you got well, a motion and a second on the floor. I got a motion and a second on the floor. We were in discussion and yeah. I had already asked if we were going to come back and, and when we were talking about the budget and talk about this and you said yes. 
So I, I took you at your word, madam. I make a motion. I don't know what I can do right now motion. because y'all y'all are rushing this through. You don't want the public to know that this woman's going to be making more than the Superior Court judges, the Supreme Court judges, and everything else. You don't want the public to know that. And I assure you, we're going to hear from the other constitutional officers. They're going to be coming up. They want more of their fees. I assure you, we're going to lose revenue. And the law says that she's only entitled to $7,500 of fees unless we agree. We have to do a resolution to pay her over the $7,500 in fees. This is a sham. This is a shame for Douglas County. It is a dark day in Douglas County. Any other discussion from the board? And it's racist. It's racist on the part of y'all, and you know it is. Okay. Any other discussion? Call the board. Chair. Okay. We have a motion and a second. When I call your district, please respond accordingly. District 1? No. District 2? Yes. District 3? Yes. District 4? Absolutely not. Chairman? Yes. We have a 3-2 vote on the motion carries. Madam Chair, just for the record, can I just state what the total of all funds were? Yes. Thank you. Uh, the total of all funds was $180,839,172. Thank you. Okay. We're going to move on to tab number. I was going to move back to tab number nine. I believe that was one that we had missed was authorization to approve the amendment of the Douglas County fiscal policies. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Yeah, just real quick. We need a, a very quick, is David Corbin there? Or Jennifer, let's let David come forth. David Corbin, can you just peek in and just speak to the highlights of this, just for the record um, and how this applies? Um, for the, the areas that we've done, please. I am. And, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, the policy that we have placed, uh, that we are proposing, um, primarily deals with four or five areas. First of all, the county has existing policies. Every year we go through the process uh, in parallel with the budget to update uh, for things that have changed uh, in the marketplace and for uh, the different financial situations, similar to what you've gone through with COVID, to make sure that that the policies keep uh, <clears throat> fit the vision of the board and, and where you're expected to go uh, to maintain your service platform. So, in light of that, we've made and recommended a, a couple of changes. The first one is dealing with your TAN policy uh, and how you uh, you know what the basis for borrowing uh, TAN proceeds are throughout you know throughout the year, fiscal year. Uh, the second one dealt with a long-term financial stabilization plan. As you know, we have spent the last four years uh, under the leadership of the board lengthening, lengthening the financial maturity of the county. And having said that, there are models and, and um, plans that we have put together. And now we've adopted them. We're pro proposing that you adopt them and place them into your um, existing policies for review uh, at the mid-year retreat every year to give you a snapshot of what the world is going to look like going forward from a planning perspective. Uh, the third uh, aspect of this plan deals with, in fact, uh, the, the budget, the fund balance policy uh, starting next year, not this year. Um, the goal will be to consistently raise your fund balance going forward starting. Uh, we want to, we've recommended a range of 12 to 15%. Based on what I've heard today, you're, you've already gotten to 12%, uh, which is a good thing. You've been operating at 10. So putting a little bit more in reserves or having a goal to put a little bit more in reserves over the next couple of years will bode the county well and continue to position uh, you for the things that you want to do here in the, in, in the next couple of years. Um, and those are, those are primarily the changes. Uh, 
that we're recommending that you uh, execute um, at this moment. Thank you, Mr. Corbin. Um, very um, well done. I want to thank you and Jennifer Hallman for helping me sort of help. This is something that we've been talking about since last year um, that we knew we needed to do. Um, it, it, it was important for our long-term stability, and I appreciate the board um, embracing this at this moment. So, Madam Chair, no, need, no, long, no need to belabor this. I yield the floor back to you. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, board of Commissioners, we're going to move on to our consent agenda. All items are subject Thank to. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm so sorry. We have a motion a second. Please, any other discussion? Commissioner Mitchell, I think I saw you. Oh, oh no, no, I was just trying to tell you we've got a motion of. Uh, yeah. a, okay. A motion a second on the floor, so that's all. If there are no more, if there's no further discussion, uh, we have a motion in the second. When I call your district, please uh, cast your vote accordingly. Uh, district one. Yes. District two. Yes. District three. Yes. District four. Abstain. Okay. And chairman, yes. We have four yeses and one abstain, and the motion carries. We're going to move on to Board of Commissioners to consent agenda. I'll start with tab number 12 authorization for the chairman to execute a 2021 employment agreement for contract employees. Tab number 13, authorization for chairman to execute a 2021 annual agreements with Share House, Douglas County Shelter Incorporation, County Attorney, Board of Assessors, uh, Attorney, um, and then the employee car allowances, juvenile contract attorney, uh, Thendo Bishop, uh, juvenile contract attorney, Mar Marcia O'Brien, juvenile contract attorney, Amber Walden, juvenile contract attorney, Tim McMillan, Juvenile Contract Attorney Amy Hayes, Juvenile Contract Attorney Bunny Binkley, uh, Juvenile Contract Attorney Chelsea Mitchell, uh, Stanco and Associates Justice Consultants LLC, and Juvenile Conflict uh, Conflict Attorney Robert Kuntz. Tab number 14 is authorization to approve a yearly contract with Judicial Alternative Alternatives of Georgia Incorporation JAG for Mr. Menier. Uh, probation services for Superior Court and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents subject to final legal review. Tab number 15, authorization to approve the first amendment of the aging subgrant agreement fiscal year 2021 with the Atlanta Region Commission and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents and amend the budget. Tab number 16, authorization to approve yearly contract with Judicial Alternatives of Georgia Incorporation, JAG, for Mr. Meaner probation services for state court and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents and amend the budget. Tab number 17, author, uh, authorization to create a law clerk position for juvenile court at no impact to the budget. Tab number 18, authorization to approve a four-year lease with Duncan Family Partnership for two office spaces at 6381 Catherine Street needed for the Board of Elections and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 19, authorization to accept grant funds in the amount of $565,470 from the Center Tech and Civic Life to be used for the January runoff elections and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 20, authorization to renew with Raymond L. Fowler, MD, FACEP, to serve as medical director for the Douglas County Fire and EMS for the year 2021 and authorize the chairwoman to sign all related documents pending final legal review. And tab number 21, authorization for Douglas County Sheriff's Office to renew contract with the correct health for health services for inmates, effective January 2021, through December 31st, 2021, and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents pending uh, final legal review. Tab number 22, authorization to renew lease agreement with W.T. Thornton Family Limited Partnership 1 with Douglas County Sheriff's Department effective January 1st, 2021, December 31st, 2024, and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents pending legal review. Tab number 23, authorization to re-enter into a contract agreement with Whitlock, also known as AVI uh, SPL, 
for the audiovisual equipment at the Emergency Operations Center in the annual amount of $6,720 and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 24, authorization to approve an annual agreement with GFL Environmental A-Waste uh, Industries Company for Solid Waste and Recycling Services for various Douglas County locations for a total cost of $35,482.75 as recommended by the Purchasing Oversight Committee and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents pending final legal review. Board of Commissioners, that concludes our consent agenda. Are there any questions? Or do you have any specific questions for any of our directors? Being no. none. Okay, that can that concludes. Okay, Vice Chairman Robinson, and then I'm gonna call the question. Well, call the question. Chairman. Okay. Well, Board of Commissioners. Chairman Jones, I do. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. <laughs> I Park. do. Agenda item. Trying to do three things at one time. Agenda item number 19: authorization to accept grants, grant funds in the amount for the runoff. Is Director Kidd on the line? I don't believe so, Commissioner. Okay. Is Director Till on the line? I'm, I'm, I'm oh, you're okay. I hear you. Okay. I think he's on the line. Okay. Uh, Milton Kidd. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good afternoon, Director Kidd. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. My question to you is this grant, does it require a match from the county? There is a match from the county uh, for this grant. This is an additional uh, grant I, I sought out to shore up our uh, budgetary uh, needs for the, the January 5th election. Technically, uh, it's going on right now, but it technically goes into the 2021 budget because the election does not happen until January, the actual election day. But there is no matching of funds for the county with this. Okay. And so, as you alluded to, the January 5th election is happening now because we're in early, early voting. Yes, ma'am. Are the funds being used to help with staff to offset certain things? Or can you explain to me what, what we're doing with these funds? In, in this grant proposal, the largest majority of the uh, grant funds are for staffing for actual election day. But okay. uh, we, I did send this to all of the commissioners at this point. We had to outline how we planned on using uh, the funds for this. Uh, the largest chunk of the grant funds will be used for uh, election day. Uh, some of the funds were used for voter engagement. We sent our elections calendar for uh, this current election season to every uh, voter in Douglas County, to which you all should have received right now. Those were purchased with grant funds. It also allow, uh, allows us to do uh, some improvements to our annex uh, location, which will be used to process uh, absentee ballots in future elections as well. Okay. Thank you. Just wanted to make sure that um, we knew what the funds were being used for and that this um, election cycle encompasses the, the January 5th Senate runoff and that you were using it mostly for staff because it does cost the taxpayers when we have to pay people to go into the polling locations and actually carry out these elections. Usually it's paid for by taxpayer dollars, but we're so glad that your office took the initiative to go out and look for grants to help us offset exactly what we just voted on, which was the budget. So with that, I thank you and I yield Madam Chair. Thank you, thank you so much, Commissioner Carlton, and thank you so much, Director Kidd. Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Do we have so a second? Moved. Okay. Okay, we, we have a motion and a second, I believe our so moved was uh, uh, Vice Chairman Robinson and the second was uh, Commissioner Carthen. I believe I heard you. For the for the record clerk, I just yeah. want you to codify the record. Okay, thank you. We have a motion and a second and we've had discussions. You asked, we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? I want to not circumvent this moment. Any other discussion? Yes, Madam Chair. Okay, Vice Chairman Robinson. Yeah, we got a motion and a second. So um, 
Uh, is Don Evers director out there? Don Evers, are you here? Hmm. I don't know. I it's, all right, it, it's okay, Madam Chair, and maybe the county administrator. Look, I'll, I'll just make my comment as a, uh, a condition of my vote. I'm, I'm focusing specifically on service agreements, um, and I, I wanted clarity that there is no service agreement that has an annual auto renewal, that any service agreement that's currently on, on deck right now in this approval, if it's more than five years, it does not have um, an annual auto renewal, and that notice will be given as soon as possible. Um, to allow enough time um, to obviously um, uh, make adjustments for um, pr proposals or bids that may be necessary associated with that. Lisa, I need you to be very clear on what I said. In other words, more than five years, any service agreement that has more than five years, there is no auto renewal, and that whatever date they have as far as 90 days, 60 days, whatever that proper date is, we give proper notice, and whoever that needs to be, whether it's the director or purchasing, whether it's the county administrator or it's the chair, I want that in the record so there's no there's no confusion about the intent. All right, that's all. I yield the floor, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you, um, Vice Chairman. Let me chime in. That notice notification would come from our director of purchasing, um, yes, certainly, and as it's written, uh, please codify the record accordingly, uh, clerk. With that being said, if there are no other questions, we have a Madam, motion. Madam Chair, let me just clarify what was just asked so it's very clear. The motion was to approve the consent agenda. I will make sure the vice chairman knows that our contract as county attorney rolled over in September and it has an auto renew. If the commission later downrange determines it does not want us to renew at the end of the year, it would have to have a vote in order to do that. Uh, but that's not what's on the table currently. I just want to make sure that's clear and there's not sidebar about the actual motion on the table. All right, let, let me be clear. You cannot be in this conversation when we're talking about your contract. You're in conflict. That's the point. You can't be on both sides, right? That's the conflict that we have here, right? You, can't, you cannot introduce yourself. This is my issue right here. There is no sixth commissioner. Right. You should have just let it be with a comment. And moved on. I yield the floor. Finish this. Madam Chair, it's going to be for the record. Yeah, we have a motion and a second already in place and we've had discussion. Board of Commissioners, we have a motion and a second. When I call your district, let's uh, move accordingly. Uh, district one. And Madam Chair, I know I'm getting ready to cast this vote, but I, I apologize. I, I missed something here. Okay. And I don't know. Do you, I can certainly, we, we can pause. Okay. What do you need? Okay. Go move on until I can kind of, you know, get my thoughts back together. Okay. District 2. Yeah, we're in the code. We're in the vote. Yes. District 3. Yes. District 4. District 4. Abstain. Okay. District 1. District 1, are you there? Bear with me one second, Madam Chair. Okay, I will. Mm -hmm. We can the vote for your consent agenda. We can keep this going. Oh, well, my, yeah, my vote is uh, yes for the consent agenda. I'm just waiting on District 1. Yes. Okay, we have a four, uh, four yeses and one abstain, and the motion carries. All right, we're going to move on to the approval of the expenses. Uh, Board of Commissioners, you have the expenses before you, uh, and certainly do we have a motion to approve? Madam? Yes, Commissioner. Uh, Commissioner. I need some clarification, please. 
Mm -hmm. uh, I need the definition of a listening post. And if it's a is if it's for the citizens, is it advertised anywhere that the commissioner is going to be at that at that place at a particular time? Commissioner, that's a good question. I, I'm not a district commissioner, so you may want to post that question to your peer. I will respond. Yes, uh, uh, Vice uh, Chair Robinson, you may respond too. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, to, to all citizens, um, yes. Um, there is um, 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 what I call listening polls, where I go out into the community and I listen to citizens no different than a town hall or anything like that. Um, it's, a, it's a public venue. I've been asked this question before. You're more than welcome to go to a, 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 this, this venue and go to. I do not have to advertise my goings. Um, I've spoken to the ex-attorney general. When we were going through this Facebook. He says, that's frivolous. Like you, you don't have to publish that. Anybody can go out to a private event. That's that's your time. I use my listening post just to hear the citizens. I don't stay in a bubble. It's important for me to get out and feel them, right? I don't sit and type newsletters. I can't see. I have to go and be around citizens. That's part of my job to get out. Random people, hear them where they are. Ask them about fire chiefs. Ask them about you know probates. Ask them. I ask them real questions. What do y'all think about this? Did y'all see this? Did y'all see this? They are okay with me. And I tell them, hey guys, they're complaining about me spending $10 and doing that. They're like, well, Commissioner Robinson, we, we appreciate that you're around. We think we appreciate that you got access. You're not like some of them other people that's on high and mighty. I'm an average random citizen. I'm a neighbor. And that's part of like, they're comfortable with that. So yes, it's part of me getting out, getting input, not bringing back into this. Uh, if anybody has a, a challenge with that, understand, take your position. Madam Chair, I yield the floor. But um, it's always in the same place. So, well, there was two that was outside the county. What citizens are you listening to outside the county on Cascade Road? When you go there, you, you, you're, you're meeting with people. See, the, the issue is <laughs> you can't, Madam, Madam Goddard, you can't control me. You can't oh. control how I move. No. I, can, I, mean, I won't control say, the Chair, can I talk? Madam Chair, Madam Chair. It, it, yes. Go to Gibson. Yeah. Let's keep it. Let's keep out it. to be reimbursed. And it's like, well, he's going there. He's what citizen? What citizens? The citizens that voted me into office. That's who. If anybody wants to come, you can. It's, 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 it's like control of Facebook. It's about control. Guys. Yeah. No, I don't know when stop interrupting there. me, Madam Guider. I don't know when you're going to be there. It's it, just it doesn't matter. It's, it's random. It's for the citizens. It's not about you. It's about the citizens. I, when I show up, they're like, okay. You it's invite me to come, but I don't know when you're going to be there. That's, that's, that's I'm sure. Let this go. It, let's keep moving. Board of Commission, let's move on because that we're, we're not civil with one another. And I've oh, requested that the initial of the meeting. Well, okay. That's that's norm. So, I don't think it's norm, Commissioner. I just want us to be civil with one another. Again, let's look, we want to keep it in the fair way, and let's keep moving. Any other questions regarding this? These expenses, approval of expenses. We have a motion and a second. Um, Ma'am, we don't have a motion. We have a motion. Do we have a second? No, I don't think we have a motion. Oh, yeah, I have a call. Okay, okay. Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to approve the expenses? Yes. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We just had discussion. Any any other further discussion? We have a motion and a second. When I call your district, please uh, cast your votes accordingly. District one. Yes. District two. Yes. District three. Yes. District four. Abstain. Okay. Chairman, yes, we have a four, um, one vote. We have four yeses and one abstain, and the motion carries. Board of Commissioners, um, I, I, I want to take the time before I go yield to our, our um, communications director just to, to clarify something because Certainly, I know we have a lot of propaganda 
in our community. And I want everyone to have a wonderful holiday. And so we can focus on relaxing and be stress and, and become stress free because this pandemic has been quite overwhelming for all of us. And what I want to make it clear, as I've stated and met with the citizen on yesterday, the only thing that the Board of Commissioners can control for the probate judge salary is local supplement. It's a local supplement, a su su supplement. And she's not the only judge that receives a local supplement. The other fees that we're talking about, that's a moot point, simply because we've never talked about those fees for any other probate judge in the history of Douglas County or any other fee fees that are uh, constitutional officers receive. So I want to take that off the radar. So instead of, uh, I know there was some mention earlier, uh, there was a uh, mention, something was mentioned that this person would make more than a Supreme Court judge. The Board of Commissioners, if you add our numbers together, is 125. That is still lower than most of the judges in this county. So I want to make it very clear so our citizens won't become confused. Now, all hearts and minds are clear in this county. Again, the Board of Commissioners only tr can control one area, and that's that local supplement. And everything else, we have no control over. So I'm going to move on to the announcements. Rick Martin, if you Madam, could. Madam, Madam Chair, before you do the announcements, may I uh, say something, please? Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Guy, you have the floor. And then um, I just want to... Um, say something about Mark Till, but um, I think you need to go back and look at the law that on the probate judge, we control uh, whether or not she gets all of the fees or $7,500. You need to go back. I talked to judges around here. So you, your information is wrong. But anyway, I want to move forward and just thank Mark for his 16 years of dedicated service to Douglas County. However, to the sorrow of many, he will be leaving at the end of this year. Mark first served in the engineering department for 11 years and was promoted up to the county administration uh, administrator's position by then chairman Tom Wortham in 2015, where uh, Mark has served since then. I cannot begin to explain the amount of respect county employees department uh, directors, um, most elected officials, as well as officials in both Billerica and Douglas. <coughs> Mark was awarded the ACCG award just this year as the outstanding county administrator of the year. Mark is known as a man of integrity, <clears throat> a rare character, <coughs> excuse me, a rare character trait these days but a commodity sought out by most employers. He will be sorely missed by all, not only by those he led with great wisdom in day-to-day -day governance, but also, uh, also he, he served, um, he led with fairness and truthfulness, but also by his many, many friends and associates here in Douglas County and surrounding area. We wish, or I wish Mark till Godspeed and much success in his next chapter of life. It was a great blessing and a pleasure to get to know him and to serve with him. And I thank him for his service. Thank you. I yield. Thank you so much, uh, Commissioner Guider. And likewise, um, I'm quite sure the entire board, and I can I can only speak for myself, uh, echo the sentiments that you just read. And certainly I've had an opportunity to uh, spend some time with Mark, and he's honored that he spent four years in my administration, which was not uh, something that was uh, that I had to do, and I did so uh, with grace. And actually, that outstanding ACCG award that he has in his pocket that will forever uh, make him great and uh, certainly will uh, elevate his resume was because of me making that submission to ACCG and writing uh, and uh, certainly a dissertation that explained the kind of character and the man that he is. So it's my honor to have ex uh, put him before the ACCG so he could receive the award. We were astounded that he would 
that he would uh, secure this award uh, just based off um, my recommendation. And I'm just uh, so privileged and so happy that he'll be able to have that in his toolbox as he go forward and land probably some even larger positions in his career. Uh, certainly, uh, he has done a great job, and, um, and he's highly respected all over the state of Georgia. So thank you, Mark Teal, for your service. Um, at this time, Board of Commissioners, do we have any uh, announcements? And I know we do, but I'm going to start with Rick Martin, and I will allow him to make some announcements. Rick Martin, would you please take, uh, take the lead on our announcements today? Yes, Madam Chair. Uh, good afternoon and uh, Board of Commissioners and staff. Uh, we have a, quite a few announcements and uh, we'll begin um, just at this time. Hold on one second, okay. Uh, the 2020 Douglas County Citizens of the Year Awards will be held Wednesday, December 30th at 6.30 via the Douglas County External Affairs and Douglas County Happenings Facebook pages. Uh, we invite the public to tune in to help honor our Douglas County citizens who have made a substantial impact on our community in the year 2020. For more information, you can email Director of External Affairs T. Stuart Stanley at co.douglas.ga.us. The 2020 Douglas County Swearing In Ceremony for re elected and newly elected officials will be held on Tuesday, December 29th at 6 p.m. in Citizens Hall at the Douglas County Courthouse. Uh, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, this year's ceremony will not be open to the public. It will be streamed live, though, through DCTV23.com and available on Douglas County Happenings Facebook page, as well as broadcasted on our government access channel, DCTV23, for cust for uh, uh, Comcast customers and Channel 99 for AT&T Uverse uh, customers as well. Beginning Friday, December 18th, free COVID-19 testing is being offered at Derelict Park. That's at 2171 Mac Road in Douglasville. Uh, it's a drive-through testing situation um, from Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. and on Saturdays, 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. No appointment is necessary. This is sponsored by the DC Pulmonary Medicine uh, in collaboration with Douglas County Parks and Recreation, the Sheriff's Office and Premier Drug Store. That begins again tomorrow. Uh, the Douglas County Board of Commissioners have partnered with uh, Cobb and Douglas Public Health, CORE and a nonprofit group, a Woman's Worth project to bring community free COVID-19 testing and a food drive on Saturday, December 19th. That's happening from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. That also is a drive-through event that will take place on the grounds of the Douglas County Courthouse. Pre-registration is strongly encouraged prior to arrival. You can visit CelebrateDouglasCounty.com on details on how to register. Douglas County is hosting a blood drive by the American Red Cross on Monday, December 21st in Citizens Hall at the Douglas County Courthouse. That's happening from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. To schedule an appointment, please visit redcrossblood.org. On December 19th, the Douglas County Courthouse will also be having advanced voting for the general runoff election from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. on the first floor of the courthouse. This is currently the only Saturday for early voting on the voting calendar. Several other advanced precincts will be open and available to Douglas County voters on Saturday as well from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. These advanced precincts include Boundary Waters Aquatic Center, Dog River Library, Derelict Park, and Old Courthouse. The Douglas County Elections and Registration will be closed over the holidays on Thursday, December 24th and Friday, December 25th in observance of the Christmas holiday. All advanced voting sites will also be closed during this time. Advanced voting will close at 2 p.m. on Thursday, New Year's Eve, the 31st of December, and closed on January 1st in observance of the new year. All advanced voting sites will also be closed during this time. If you don't make it to advanced voting, all 25 Douglas County Election Day precincts will be open on January 5th, the Election Day runoff, 
from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. If you are in line at 7 p.m., you will get a chance to vote. That completes today's announcements. I yield back to you, Chairman Jones. Thank you so much, uh, Communications Director. We appreciate uh, you uh, providing us an update and, and communicating to the citizens of Douglas County. And uh, with that being said, I want to yield to my commissioners to see if there are any uh, announcements uh, as we approach our holiday season. And I believe I see Commissioner Carthen. Commissioner Carthen. Yes, thank you, Chairman Jones. I just wanted to give two um, big happy birthday shout out. One is to my son-in-law. I call him my son in love. Uh, Cisco, today is his birthday. He is an engineer from Georgia Southern, so I am so proud of him. And I just wanted to say happy birthday, Cisco. Uh, and then to my grandmother, who will be 94 years old on December 24th. I just wanted to say thank you uh, <laughs> to my granny. Uh, I think all of you have met her. She's feisty. She asks about you guys all the time. I just wanted to say happy birthday, and I'm so glad that you are still around. And to all of the citizens, happy holidays. Take time to enjoy your family, and thank God that you're still here. With that, Madam Chair, I yield. Okay, thank you so much, Commissioner Carthen. We have any other announcements from the board before I lead with the closing remarks? Commissioner Mitchell, I see you. Yes. Yeah, okay, Commissioner Mitchell. Yes. I, I'll be I'll be brief, and, and again, um, I'll add to uh, the great job that uh, Mark Hill has done, and I just want to say again, thank you to you know, it's been a, a nice ride with him and all that he's done here in the county as the county administrator and manager of this um, this board. Uh, he's done well. The other thing is we've got a, an event that's coming forth and um, for Christmas, and we always do this for Christmas, and we do it um, during the, excuse me, we do it Thanksgiving, and where we feed uh, those needy families and all that, and we do it during also on Christmas Day. Uh, I think, if you bear with me, I'd, Brandon, did I get you? Did I get you on, Brandon? Yes, I'm here. Okay, if you would explain and, and talk about the event on Christmas Day, kind of the whole layout and and what that looks like for Christmas Day, if you would please. Oh, absolutely. Uh, first off, to everyone present, I want to say a big thank you to Commissioner Mitchell and Commissioner Carthy for always supporting our Thanksgiving Day brunch and our Christmas Day brunch. Uh, I'm Brandon Penniman with Fit for the Future. And each year we take some time to just serve those in the community who are in need. And um, we do this by providing hot meals. This year due to COVID, we're doing it a little different. We're actually delivering the meals directly to everyone's houses. So we'll be serving about 350 meals to local community members. Um, we'll be setting up at Crossroads Church off of Stewart Parkway here in Douglasville. And we'll be serving from there as well. And then we'll also have a hot spot at Wendy's uh, because in the past we've done the event at the Wendy's on Fairburn Road. Um, so people are still expecting us to be there. So we'll have hot meals there with toiletries and other items available at Wendy's. Um, we'll actually get started at 9 o'clock. People will start leaving at 9 o'clock. The hot spot is planned to be set up by 10. And we'll be out there from 10 until 12 at Wendy's. And we'll be delivering plates from like 9 to 12. And Brandon, if you also just share some of the great sponsors who actually jump on board with you uh, from all that which you've done in, in support of the county and all that. So if you would, and then I'll leave you alone. Okay, uh, absolutely. Um, well, first off, the county, um, you guys have always been a big support. Also, Anchor Heating and Air, they're a huge support. Um, Creekside Dental, which is a local dental office here in Douglas County, they are a huge support. Um, the local Lutheran Church. With Ms. Leela Myers. Um, she actually goes out and serves individuals um, every Monday and Tuesday, so they support us as well. Also, Oak Hill Roofing, they're a big support of all the work that we do here in Douglas County um, and a number of other businesses. Boss United, which is a local um, group of licensed clinicians and therapists, they help out with our program. Um, so, there are a lot of people, um, Mr. Mitchell, if there's any that you can think of that I'm missing. Uh, also, uh, you got Nick Barbershop is also a big supporter as well. And, and you're right. So I, I just wanted to make sure we say a special thank you to all of these guys who have been in very in much support and to our dear friend, uh, Commissioner Carson, who 
you know, always there and, and, and willing to drive and be a part of all these things. So again, thank you uh, to Commissioner Carson and, and this board for actually supporting these types of causes. Uh, outside of that, uh, Mr. I, Mr. Mitchell, Mr. Mitchell yes. I do actually want to mention one more person who um, has been a support for a long time, for about four years now, uh, Ms. Dahlia Racine, um, the DA elect. She is a big supporter. Um, even prior to her election, she was a huge supporter um, of what we do. She actually is one of the people that delivers the plates personally as well. And um, also Zane Hedge, a local attorney here in Douglasville. He is a big help. Right. And, and, and last but not least, Ms. Penman, thank you for all that she does as well. Oh, uh, yes. Yes. yes <laughs> well, and my wife. I got to tell out my wife as well. So right. Right. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. And outside of that, Madam Chair, uh, again, thank you. And, and you guys have a merry, merry and, and a, a prosperous kickoff of 2021. And uh, this has been a, a very unique and tough 2020, but we made it. We made it. So again, thank you. And uh, thank you to the citizens of Douglas County for, you know, entrusting us to be great stewards of their tax dollars and their tax services and enjoy your Christmas. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Commissioner Mitchell, and also to the entire board of commissioners. I would like to thank you for such a, an amazing year, despite our circumstances. You've stood, uh, uh, we've stood tall. We've uh, certainly demonstrated our resilience, and we worked as a team. It's been, um, we've all made history because we will probably not see this again until maybe a hundred years, and none of us will be here to to see it. But uh, this is a historical moment. We celebrated our 150th birthday this year. Uh, still through this COVID-19, we uh, certainly generated 100% on our census. And then at the end, uh, Moody's put icing on the cake, saying that we are uh, very low debt, which is almost no, no debt. Uh, our credit rating is strong, strong financial position and uh, the team. And I would be remiss not to thank our amazing uh, staff, our uh, department heads and our uh, supervisors and managers and all our employees who weathered the storm and all our first responders, our public health uh, division and uh, our fire department, all of the EMS uh, and the first responders on the, the paramedics. This has just been sensational. It has been something that I thought that uh, in, in my lifetime I would never see, although my background is healthcare. And I just appreciate uh, the citizens of Douglas County allowing allowing me to wear my hat uh, of health care during this uh, crisis. Uh, certainly, I want to remind our citizens that we are experiencing a second wave. Uh, we are 600 cases per 100,000 uh, cases. Our positivity rate is uh, out the roof right now. We all need to do our due diligence. It is incumbent upon all of us to try to mitigate and, and, and this virus. This virus is, is one that is tricky. Uh, when you think you have a handle on it, it'll run in a different direction. So I'm asking that we continue with our three W's, which is wear a mask when in public, watch your social distancing, that's very important, and also wash your hands repeatedly throughout the day throughout the day. But also, when we speak of social distancing, I know uh, 50 sounds like a good number to have uh, people uh, congregating, but we would like to see uh, less than 10 over the holiday. Uh, you may consider eating dinner alone, or if, if you are together with a family member, you still want to watch the, your social distancing, keep your six feet, uh, that distance between you, uh, so we can continue to um, address this virus. This virus uh, certainly has a huge effect uh, and impact on the respiratory system. And the respiratory system is the most vulnerable um, system in our uh, entire body because the lung is one of the most complex uh, organs that you have in your body. So uh, citizens, you will be receiving a mailer within the next week just encouraging you, number one, to celebrate the holiday and have a good time, but at the same time also asking you to be cognizant and mindful that this virus is still alive. 
um, and we appreciate you. The Board of Commissioners, we wholeheartedly appreciate you. We have invested dollars uh, in the upcoming vaccination. Um, so for the vaccines, we're working with our public health. We put a tune of $1.5 million on the table to see what we can do to uh, actually go in and, and, and provide this vaccine to our citizens at no cost to you. So with that being said, Board of Commissioners, again, I thank you for an amazing year that will go down in the history books in this country. Uh, everybody, uh, and, and we know that you need to prepare because this second surge is serious. Uh, we are looking again to, we are on the shoulders of Congress. We are, there's another CARES Act funding supposed to be rolling down out of Congress very soon. Uh, another, another stimulus check coming. Uh, this is serious. We have uh, citizens who are experiencing things such as hardships and homelessness, and they need their electricity and their water uh, bills paid. But thank, thanks to this Board of Commissioners, uh, we um, approved a resolution that would allow me to go in and to support our citizens. And I thank uh, the Board of Commissioners in a category, all those categories, the buckets of monies that we created for our homeless, our veterans, our uh, technology, all those things will uh, support us as we go into 2021. So with that being said, I just would like to thank every citizen. I want you to be safe, have a happy, happy holidays. The Board of Commissioners and I love you and we appreciate everything that you do and enjoy your holiday season. And let's prepare for 2021. With that being said, Board of Comm Commissioners, if there's nothing else to come before this board, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you.